So all the today is the date that that California fast food minimum wage is going up to $20 an hour. Assembly Bill 1228 is in effect as of Monday, setting wages for California fast food workers $4 above the statewide minimum. Now, why do they deserve 20 when all the other people apparently only deserve 16? Yeah. Did they, are they the only group that deserves a living wage or people who work at McDonald's? It also creates a fast food council to determine future minimum wage increases and to establish other employment standards at fast food restaurants, according to the Department of Industrial Relations. <laughs> what WTF is that? Hey, the man. Department of Industrial Relations. Yeah, who you work for. I'm on the fast food council. I did not have industrial relations. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Which fast food workers will benefit? Employees of a national fast food chain with more than 60 establishments across the country offering limited service will receive the wage increase. It covers fast food Brother restaurant Queen. employees regardless of whether they employed by the national brand or a franchise. Hmm. There you go. They typically serve food and drinks for immediate consumption, either on site or to go with limited or no table service. This includes McDonald's, Pizza Hut, uh, which announced it anticipates laying off over 1,000 delivery drivers as a result of the new wages. In an email statement, Joseph Bryant, executive vice president for the Service Employees International Union, said livable wages should be a priority for corporate fast food companies. Freaking union. Have I mentioned I don't like unions? Oh, uh, yeah. It's bad enough they took down that bridge. I know. You know, and now they're over here trying to mess with everyone's fast food wages. Mm -hmm. Those who oppose the new minimum wage law have voiced concerns that Californians would have to pay more for their services. Good. The crazy conspiracy theorists saying mm -hmm. that that's going to drive food prices to yep. go up. That's weird. In a financial analysis conducted by the Roosevelt Institute, Concluded that fast food, the fast food industry's profit margins provide sufficient room to absorb higher wage costs. I'll tell you what, they don't. And so in the, in the question of is this going to cause things to, uh, to cost more, is it going to drive food prices up, they say no because... They'll just take it from the profit. They'll just take it out of their profits. And in the case of places like McDonald's, probably Burger King and a bunch of the other ones, they'll just give away all of their profits that they have and they'll make no profits and they'll make sure the food prices stay the same. Mm. And that's the official conclusion here from the uh, Roosevelt for, in Institute. For the good of the community, mm -hmm. uh, the graciousness they'll of their it. own hearts. They're just going to do it. No, they're going to keep the same profit margins and they're going to raise the food prices. Which, by the way, the profit margins are not that high. No. I, I know this. Well, I know this empirically because I worked at a, as a manager at McDonald's and I was responsible for making sure my labor cost fit into a certain percentage per hour. Mm -hmm. I had to do the analysis because literally off of that store, they were making anywhere from like 5 to 8% profit. Yeah. And so it mattered whether your labor was 20% or 50%. Mm -hmm. per hour. You had to keep a track per hour. The goal was 20%. And so when it went up to 50 you, had to you cut guys people. decided to not take profits at that time. No, you had to cut people. Oh, that's, okay. That's mm. what it was. Mm. And it didn't matter what was coming. That's weird. Yeah. So to keep the same profit margins, they just sent people home. And exactly. And they, they made less money. That way the store could keep... That's greedy corporations, man. Those that's terrible... Gre it mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be better if they just lost money and then they went out of business and it didn't exist and everyone there <laughs> didn't have a job? Right. Isn't that better for everyone? Yeah. <laughs> and for before they went out of business, they would be able to basically give away stuff for free. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Bryant, that's the union guy. He used the term scare tactics when addressing the threats of price increases and job cuts. You know, it's scare tactics because if you look across all the states in our union, California's right in the middle of the pack when it comes to cost of living. You know, there's just they're not expensive at all no, to, no. to be there in California. <laughs> And when you look at their unemployment rate, well, it's just it's just got to be right there in line with the rest of the country. I bet you know they don't have more unemployment than other than other states yeah. inside the United States. They have same homeless camps as we mm -hmm. find everywhere else. Same, you know, same camps. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Uh, he said corporations need to pay their fair share and provide their operators with the resources they need to pay their workers a living wage without cutting jobs or passing the cost. To consumers, Brian. Do you know where said, most of like McDonald's profit sits in the stock market? Mm -hmm, yeah. 
they're worth billions because their stock price is high. Yeah. That's it. And they own a lot of uh, uh, real, real estate. estate. <laughs> that they can yeah. borrow against, mm -hmm. by they the way. a lot of that. What people don't get is that there's McDonald's corporate, and then there's the franchises who pay fees to, to McDonald's corporate, corporate to mm -hmm. be able to have a store that says McDonald's and get all the McDonald's products. Those people don't make a ton of money. And normally it's normally what you get is someone who owns a couple McDonald's stores, a few McDonald's stores. Well, to make a decent amount is. of money, you have to have a few. Mm -hmm. Basically, so basically McDonald's requires that the store uh, grosses at least a million dollars a year. So if you if you open a McDonald's and it doesn't gross a million dollars a year, that's part of the contract, the corporate will shut you down. But of that million, the owner typically makes around a hundred thousand. It's ten percent. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a little bit less, sometimes a little bit more. Yeah. But like you're you have the responsibility and the risk of owning a store mm -hmm. and making sure that thing earns a, at least a million dollars every single year. You gotta take out that franchise loan. The only way these exactly the only way these franchise people make any money uh, for the ones I worked for uh is like you know, short enterprises, they, they had like eight McDonald's. Mm -hmm. So I think they netted for their family around $800,000 a year, somewhere around there. So now you're in, you know, the top 1% or whatever, but you have the risk of owning and operating eight stores and adhering to all the standards and employing people and keeping up with all of that. Mm -hmm. so like, like it's your responsibility. You're taking on that risk. And if, guess what? In Southern Illinois, <laughs> If people start to move out, your store no longer makes money, the corporate will shut you down. By the way, you know who doesn't technically have to worry about this is uh, Panera. Panera, yeah. <laughs> In California, mm -hmm. a fast food restaurant that operates a bakery that produces for sale on the establishment's premises, bread, will be exempt from the new wage law. According to the bill, this exemption applies only where the establishment produces for sale bread, as a standalone menu item and does not apply if the bread is available for sale solely as part of another menu, like Subway, you know, if they make their bread there, which they still don't probably, but well, now they you get the all idea. have to do is add, add an item. Yeah. <laughs> like bread. Buy a loaf. <laughs> I can't wait for McDonald's rolls <laughs> to bread, come out. I know. <laughs> Made in house. Yeah. <laughs> That's all they got to do. Exactly. So I wanted to know unemployment rates for states in the U S the lowest unemployment rate is in North Dakota because no one lives there. Followed closely by South Dakota. Every, no one lives there everywhere, either. <laughs> everywhere, everyone in those states is clearly just giving up. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's what it is. Yeah. Okay, then you got Vermont, Maryland, Nebraska. We don't have to go through the entire All the thing. other states. All the saying? other all the other states. And oddly enough, it's not even number 50. Number 51 is California. <laughs> it's behind Puerto Rico. <laughs> no, it's behind the District of Columbia. Oh, oh. I thought it's it was listed. behind Puerto Rico that was ravaged by a hurricane not that long ago. California comes in at uh, 5.3 on, un on its unemployment rate. Uh, other states in here include Illinois, New York, Connecticut, uh, New Jersey, D.C. Nevada is number 50. What's going on there? Weird. They're counting uh, Kentucky. Uh, they must not count the moonshiners. How about that? No, those don't yeah. count. Those don't count. Uh, California has got one of the highest minimum wages already. District of Columbia has the highest one. Mm. Uh, California has got 16 statewide. This is 20 for, for, for fast food workers, except for Panera because mm -hmm. of, of bread. Yeah. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that. Illinois, also one of the highest ones. And... Uh, you typically see a lot of people fleeing these states, trying to go to the better places uh, to live because they're too expensive. And the homeless people are just getting stuff all over you all the time. You're walking through poo and, and all that. I wanted to also look at what it is in the U.S. for So people who work at fast food restaurants, those are typically your low skill or low. You don't have a lot of experience, like low work experience workers. Not always. There's people been working at McDonald's for a long time. They love it. They're running the joint, you know. They get there at 3 o'clock every morning, and they're opening up the store and all that, whatever. Uh, if you look at your younger people, you know, younger people tend to have less on-the-job experience, less work training, more low-skill workers. And uh, for 20 to 24 years old, that rate is 72 percent unemployment and for like 16 and 19 that rate is 12.5 percent unemployment rate why is that important because those workers 16 to 24 are typically the people who go to work at places like fast food restaurants those are like your 
introductory jobs into the labor force. And you tend to find out that those age ranges also have mm. way higher unemployment. Well, also, are we, are you not taking into account that the teen mom? No. Who's trying to support a family of four Mm-mm. at the 16 Definitely year old. It's a very high portion of America right there. A lot of people in the population. Yeah. Uh, single 18 year old mother supporting the family for i mean she had to go on teen mom just to mm-hmm. to get a check mm-hmm. you know that's right so it was probably worth it i don't know we'll see how the kids turn out uh, anyhow 7.2 12.5 why does that matter those are people who typically go to work minimum wage jobs and what if you don't have the skills what if you're not worth that amount of money uh some people get you a, don't get any experience. You don't get the job. <laughs> yeah. That's the problem. You get replaced by a machine or a touch screen, something like that. I tell you what, McDonald's taught me a lot. It really did. It taught me a lot about business, customer service, uh, standards. Mm-hmm. You know, now, of course, the say what you want about McDonald's, whatever. They're very popular for a reason. Yeah. And, and uh, I learned a lot of those things there. I went so. there twice last week. Did you? I did. Mm-hmm. Still it's haven't brought me any. So much more. I went there for lunch after I left here. God. Come on. Bless. Victim. I am. You know, until you bring me that McDanks in the morning. California's unemployment rate for ages 16 to 19 is 14%. So it is still higher than the national average. And uh, for 20 to 24 is a little over 8%. So also higher than the national average. And I would argue that has something to do with them having a higher minimum wage. Uh, because it turns out that those young people who have never worked a job before and just sitting there on their phones doing stupid crap on TikTok and Snapchat all the time, mm. probably not worth that much money. And wouldn't it be better if you just had a computer that would do it for you? That's what we're actually going to move to. You price people out of the labor force. And what you end up hearing from people is, well, if they can't afford to pay a living wage to people, they shouldn't be in business. Mm. Or uh, we should get a universal basic income. And those are all a those are all a result of things that the government does to price people out of the labor force. They make things too expensive. Like these people who can't get a job now because they're not worth twenty bucks an hour. Well, they're also gonna hate the fact that McDonald's, typically the cheapest place to get food, is way more expensive than it used to be. And so they're negatively affected on both ends, you mm. know? And in the middle out, I bet. It's, 